Martin McLean, Senior Editor at Free Studios, and welcome to this digital tour of Fabian Verdier's Vortex at Bonington Custo in London. I was lucky enough earlier this summer to direct a video where we visited Fabienne at her studio in a tiny village in rural France where she was working on this series of Vortex paintings and that video forms part of the exhibition here in the gallery and you can also see it online on freeze.com. The genesis of this series was the time that Fabienne spent as the first ever artist in residence at the Juilliard School in New York where she spent time in a master class for opera singers following and participating in and studying their training sessions in vocal and breathing technique. Music is therefore a huge part of Fabian's inspiration and working process and she was listening to Mozart arias while she was working on this series. And for this online tour, Waddington Cousteau had invited the soprano, Anna Beard Fernandez, to sing certain arias which relate to specific paintings in this exhibition. So we'll be hearing from her throughout the online tour. In the publication of this exhibition, there's a really nice quote by Fabienne about her practice, which she describes as being halfway between doing and not doing. Um, and in the video that we made, she talks about coming to the studio and, and the brush calling to her, almost like it has its own energy, its own presence. And I think in the, the painting that she does with the giant horsehair brushes, there is this sense of she's almost like dancing with a partner. There's this negotiation between her and her intentions and the energies and the forces that are somewhat just beyond her control. There are these huge sweeping brush strokes that are produced by the vertically suspended giant horsehair brushes. And then afterwards Fabian has worked into them, taken out some paint and added layers and these much narrower streaks. And it's an interesting development in her practice because there is this constant cycling between deliberation and a certain element of chance. One more reflection on chance that I just thought was really charming. Um, she talked about this long intellectual and research process in which she established this form of the column of breath, which you see throughout the exhibition, throughout the Vortex series. And she found out after she had hit upon this form that actually the form of the, which breath will take as it moves up through the throat will be something like a, a circling spiral vortex. So chance enters the picture in a very interesting way. So all of the paintings in the Vortex series are named for the Mozart aria that Fabian was listening to while she was at work on them. And this one is called Vado Madove, which means I go, but where? And as I mentioned before, the beginning of Fabian's thinking that led to this series was the time she spent at the Juilliard School in New York as their first ever artist in residence in 2014. She spent time specifically in a masterclass for opera singers, led by a woman called Edith Wiens. And um, she talks in one of the interviews in the catalogue for the show about being particularly struck by Venus' instruction to the singers that they had to expel their breath vertically so that it would expand with energy into space and carry sound in that way. 
And this was the beginning of a long process of rumination and visualization, which led to the sort of motif which Fabian refers to as the column of breath. And you have this sort of vortex-like columnar swirling, almost like a whirlwind, which is another phrase that's used often in French, a tourbillon. Um, this form which occurs throughout the paintings and reflects a sense of the body as a vibrating instrument in which breath and sound and air and energy is carried through and around and out into space. This idea of translating music, singing, breath, these kind of seemingly on some level immaterial experiences into material form is very central to what Fabienne Verdier is trying to do throughout her practice. And it really relates to her understanding of the universe, the world around us, being comprised of energy flows, something constantly moving and changing, something completely unstatic, which she tries to give form to in the abstraction. One of the things you'll notice in the exhibition is that several of the canvases have these drips down the side, which is a reminder of the role that gravity plays in the series. For all of the Vortex paintings, Fabian paints them by laying the canvas flat on the ground or on a raised surface, and she actually paints directly over these horizontal canvases. So she's constructed this mobile platform which allows her to be directly above. And in this way, I think gravity enters the painting process in a really interesting way. For some people, when you talk about horizontal canvas, the immediate connection is the great abstract expressions artists who sort of began this practice, like Jackson Pollock and Helen Frankenthaler. But I think actually Fabian employs that gesture in a very different way. Um, it's less that I see it as about sort of dethroning the painting, taking the canvas off the wall, even though there is a sort of physical performance in her painting very much. Their paintings are records of the physical act of her negotiation with all of these forces, in the same way that singing in aria was a physical act of breathing. There was a physicality to her practice. But aside from the physicality, I think what the act of placing the canvases horizontally does is bring the act of painting into dialogue with the earth in a funny way gravity as being this pull downwards, which she has to not fight completely against, but counterbalance, interact with, negotiate with. Something about that interplay between the vertical force and the horizontal plane, and almost the pull of the earth um, in a slightly mystical way, really enters into the series, even in something as small as these tiny gestures of drips on the side. Fabian has worked on a really epic scale at certain points in her career, um, making huge installations for really vast spaces. Uh, so it made sense to mention the two largest paintings in the exhibition, which are these two triptychs, of which this is one. Um, and it's interesting that the column of breath occupies 
this side of the canvas, towards the middle and the right panel. But there's this quite typical for Fabian gesture of um, this kind of gluey, spattery trail that you find leading off to the left, which is a very physical remnant of the brush entering the space of the painting. I think it's really interesting in the context of Fabian's background. She spent some time, quite famously, studying in China under the beginning of the communist regime, where it's very unusual for people to visit. And she wrote a best-selling memoir about her time there. But she's definitely not slavishly indebted to the traditions that she immersed herself in then. When we met in the studio, one of the things she mentioned was that if you were following the orthodox tradition, you would never break your brush. The brush is a sort of sacred implement. Whereas in the interest of pushing her technique, she does in fact adapt her brushes and, and create these quite elaborate systems which involves watching and mending and reconstructing. <laughs> The show is on view here at Wellington Custo on Cork Street until November 17th. Um, there is an app you can download online and via a QR code here in the gallery, which will allow you to listen to all of the arias connected with each of the paintings in the exhibition. And one of the arias I wanted to mention specifically is called Niemt mein Dank, which means Take My Thanks, and Mozart wrote as a gesture of gratitude towards a patron. And that would be a nice note to end on and say thank you for joining us in this online tour of Fabian Verdier's at Vortex. Tout ce que j'ai cherché en peinture, en art, depuis toute jeune, c'est de fuir cette idée que peut-être la représentation figurative et statique des choses, hein, qui, est, qui me semble très très loin de, de la réalité hein, et de l'essence même du réel qui est spontanéité, mouvement, mutation. J'ai été invitée par la Julia School à créer le premier laboratoire de recherche expérimentale. Je me suis rendu compte à quel point l'homme était au centre, dans son champ, d'une sorte de, de tourbillon, de vibrations, d'autres sonores. Et, et j'étais très très touchée par cette idée de couloir de circulation, de souffle, de la voix humaine qui cherche à exprimer toute la poésie du monde. Je n'ai eu de cesse de chercher ça en peinture. J'ai rencontré, pour la naissance des Vortex, une grande coach des jeunes voix d'opéra qui s'appelle Edith Vienne et qui a été très très surprise par ma démarche en tant que peintre d'essayer de participer à ces masterclass et de chercher une écriture avec mes pinceaux qui puisse raconter l'expérience du chant de la voix humaine.
chaque naissance de forme, j'ai long, un long process de maturation de la forme. La forme ne vient pas tout de suite. Hein. Donc c'est à force de tourner autour du sujet, de travailler, de réunir toutes ces informations, qu'il qu y a une pensée qui, qui commence à surgir dans mon esprit, une vision de plus en plus juste. Il y a tout un travail que je fais avant dans la bibliothèque. Donc en allant chercher ce que les gens ont pensé autour du sujet. Je comprends plein de choses sur ce que je pratique moi-même sans le savoir. J'avance comme ça. Nous sommes dans un village de sources vives et j'ai construit mon atelier sur une source. Et ce qui crée une atmosphère, une géomancie, un feng shui absolument extraordinaire dans l'atelier. J'ai besoin d'avoir d'autres lieux dans, ce, dans, ce, dans, dans cet endroit euh, qui sont le jardin et la bibliothèque où je peux me poser. À la campagne, j'ai besoin de ce silence qui n'en est pas, de ce silence actif de toutes parts qui, qui m'inspire et qui me permet euh, une certaine quiétude, une certaine attitude contemplative et qui permet de laisser surgir cet imaginaire hein, qui donne vie à ces tableaux. Au petit matin, quand j'arrive dans l'atelier et que le pinceau est là, il m'appelle, il vit. Le fait de conduire le pinceau avec toute la, la force du corps et les deux mains, il y a comme une découverte de, de balance harmonique que j'ai pu trouver, et y compris la force centrifuge, de pouvoir avec le guidon de vélo tourner sur moi-même. Le fait de chercher euh, ce centre, euh, cette colonne de circulation entre l'homme, le pinceau et le centre de gravité du monde, c'est là que je, je trouve parfois euh, des choses, une rencontre, des coïncidences, des échanges qui peuvent avoir lieu, qui je pense s'est abstrait mais que les gens peuvent comprendre puisqu'ils l'observent partout euh, dans, dans le monde sensible, dans la poésie du monde sensible.